a long time ago, in a land that is worldwide, a twink called Priming exposed the village idiot Ripsilla and all his many flaws. Ripsilla has since decided to say that he's going to take accountability and change and learn and grow. Then in 2021, another brave young man came to the fourth and exposed the village idiot for he hath not changed, he is still the same. You know what? I decided that I cannot contribute to that discussion in any sense. So what I've done is I decided to use my book learning and try to actually investigate why he hasn't changed. So, I know you make your own choices in this life and you're stunning and brave and you are all that, but please do not send anybody a mention in this video any hate or harassment or bullying. If you can afford your own Wi-Fi and you are smart enough to install it, then you should be smart enough to realize that harassment is stupid. It's not what the cool kids are doing this season or any season. So in this video, I want to further the discussion regarding the conclusions reached by both Priming and Redsky, where they concluded that and showed evidence for the fact that Ripzilla is manipulative, he plays the victim role all the time, he has an inability to take accountability and he constantly flip-flops between different sides in order to avoid criticism because you know, I'm not on their side, I'm on your side for everybody, literally everybody. And then on top of that, he continues to say that he's working on himself while all the evidence shows that he not only doesn't do that, he says it and moves on. So. If you don't know where any of those claims are coming from, then I highly recommend you watch the other videos. I will briefly recap some of the major reasons as to why these are the conclusions and then discuss an actual recent argument that he made that is totally pointless and irrelevant and nobody should ever care about it, but it demonstrates exactly how even in the pettiest of cases, he will still pull all these maneuvers just in one go. He's still doing this. Mediator, how about more of a scorekeeper? And uh, yeah, uh, please respectfully, Rebzilla, take the L because everything you're saying is working against your favorite. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, hope that's I mean, correct. like, I, I admitted my wrongs for sure. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so no need to explain anymore. You know, like, whatever. make an excuse as while you do it is the problem. Exactly, exactly. That, that's, that was also like my main criticism because I'm like, dude, dude, like, Rebzilla, you really mm -hmm. got to work on that because that, that was essentially. Um, the reoccurring theme in in Premink's video, you know that I like... wasn't I wasn't a big YouTuber at the time. I was just I wasn't even trying to do YouTube. I was just a person doing videos, and then right, somebody right, right. that we, I thought was that. my we friend that. did that. We heard that. Okay, so anyways, uh, on, like people don't want to hear that, Rebzilla. Like, okay, like like if you want if you don't want to turn out like the Rewired <laughs> Show, then you gotta really watch out what you say. Because... Out to Edwin for being such a total homie in this moment. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that Priming and Edwin are both saying that instead of just simply apologizing and taking accountability, he keeps on making excuses by giving sort of context and exceptions to and rules as to why he's doing what he's doing. It's infuriating. I would be off your back in a minute if people could just come around and admit they got one aspect of this entire story wrong. Because yeah, then at least I'd have respect for you. Look, look, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, well, I, I, I don't saying, fully agree with... You're with... don't respect me because of one thing that you disagreed with. No, I, I, I don't disrespect you because you can't take accountability on something you clearly got wrong. Well, do you have any other? Do you have any other examples besides? I that don't one? need other examples. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I need you to turn around and yes, admit, that's... hey, this obvious thing I did wrong. I obviously did it wrong. It's not all of us. We didn't all make a mistake. I made a mistake. Okay, now see how in 2021, Edwin is slightly less forgiving in this regard. I think he noticed that absolutely nothing has changed. Like most of us, um, he's literally still doing the same. He. At first, it's obvious that he's trying to deflect by bringing into question the idea of disrespect, which has absolutely nothing to do with the criticism at hand. And then he tries to deflect again by bringing in feelings. He's trying to use various maneuvers of deflection and he's testing all of them out and absolutely nothing is sticking because, again, he's missing the whole point. And this shows you exactly the parallels between 2019 and 2021, which is the fact that nothing has changed. You're entitled to your own opinion, but we both know that this was more an opinion on your end. That's the first thing. It's not my opinion that with you withheld that evidence. 
When I speak on a video, I give my very best. That would be an opinion. And I try to be as respectful as possible. This has nothing to do with respect. I'm not always correct. And if I get things wrong, I change them as soon as I figure out. This is not a matter of getting things right or wrong. This is a matter of being manipulative. And this is what's wrong with YouTube T. It's pretty obvious that he cannot, won't take accountability. I don't know which one it is. He says he's sorry and that he's trying to work on things, but after two years, literally nothing has happened. So at this point, we have to assume that he's either lying when he's saying that he's taking accountability or that he's working on himself because he's simply just not doing it. 99% of the time when somebody says, I have to go to the bathroom, they get up and go. It's, <laughs> I don't, I have no worry that they are lying because it's pretty evident in their following actions. And with him, it's been two years and it's literally the exact same argument. He's literally still working on it. So the evidence points us to the direction that not only has nothing changed, but he has no plan on it and he uses it as an excuse in order to deflect from criticism. Everyone in private gets it. If somebody though. disagrees with you, you get louder or you puff up your chest and you act like you just don't want to listen to it. Okay, then you should tell me something I'm wrong about so you can get louder or you could say I it nice and calmly and win the chat. Like, dude, I, I'm, I'm arguing points. You're arguing emotions. I don't care about that shit, dude. Okay, the first point that I want to raise here is that I constantly see in debates that people bring up this false dichotomy between logic and objectivity and facts versus feelings, saying that you're arguing one over the other. Here's the bottom line. Every single person in this world has emotions, unless, of course, you have some abnormal neurotypical development, but then you are the exception to the rule, when in this regard I'm talking about the general in most cases. Pretty much everybody then has all of the feelings, right? Everybody feels anger, sadness, pain, happiness, joy, excitement, but we do not express it equally. If you are weaponizing your feelings, so if you are angry and you decide therefore to murder somebody, you can still be criticized for murdering somebody. The fact that you are angry does not take away anything from the action in itself. Other people are also angry and choose not to murder somebody, right? So this idea of feelings replacing facts and logic and actions and consequences is completely meaningless. You either have control over your expression of emotions or you do not. If you do not, then obviously you need further help or assistance, but you cannot use it in, as a point of deflection in order to avoid criticism. Be I will not apologize for my feelings. If there is anything that I've covered that are false and incorrect, I apologize for it. I am only writing you because you said hurt me. That is all. Fuck you in your face. I don't give a shit about your goddamn feelings. The criticism was weren't about feelings. And so I write back. I said, uh, it's not my opinion, opinion that you cr omitted critical information. A typical trick that I noticed with Ripzilla and how he phrases things like right and wrong is that he often confuses moral, emotional, ethical, and subjective wrongs and rights with actual, objective, factual wrongs and rights. So if you were wrong about a fact, that does not mean you were wrong morally or ethically. So he's been criticized about getting facts wrong. That means you say yes or no and you bring proof to the table. That is the only possible way in which we as a society agreed to deal with regards to things that are facts. So he often uses moral right and wrongs to deflect from the criticism that he is using facts wrong. So in the Bianca Devins case, as an example, he just straight up lied, misrepresented the facts, and that is a factual wrongness. Now he's trying to conflate it with a moral wrongness, and therefore it is actually used as another version of deflection. But again, he is, you know, proving to us that he is morally superior because he cares about the victims, and therefore he does not need to take facts into consideration because he's a good little boy. Anything I could say is going to upset you and then that's not what I want. That's I don't want to piss you off because I actually respect and I care about you and I don't want to do that. It's also so ironic, this tweet here. I mean, he only cares about facts and credentials when it suits his narrative. It's so obvious. I mean, what about the children, Ribzilla? What about the children? You didn't explain yourself. And I, I want you to explain yourself now that. in your... 
What? I'll own up to that. I don't explain. I didn't explain. I understand that the miscommunication is that my in my own inability to portray things across accurately, 100. percent And I, this is something I'm constantly working on. I mean, I'm constantly working on my. It's 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 a thing I'm constantly working on and have been working on since my accident. And I hope that I get better, but even making videos in general is a struggle. So if I mess up, that's that's something that I own 100%. So, well, right now you should own that you you called, you, you like, you know, you tried, you did try to sway people's opinion saying like, don't. Possibly one of the most annoying tropes of the RIP squad is that whenever he fails to get what he wants, whenever he fails to portray his point, he goes straight for the victim narrative. Uh, this, ugh. This makes me sick to my stomach. I mean, look, being a victim is not a personality trait. We get it, something really piss poor happened to you and I'm so sorry and I don't wish that upon anybody and fuck, it sucks, right? But it's not a personality trait. You don't just get to pull out victimhood whenever you actually do something wrong. And here's a fucking hot take if ever I made one. If you are claiming that due to your trauma and your accident, you are incapable of getting very serious matters correct, then maybe, just maybe, you should not be doing those things. I'm sorry, if you lack the capacity, then you lack the capacity, it is what it is. My dog lacks the physical capacity to be a good driver. So guess what? I do not put my dog behind the steering wheel. It doesn't mean my dog is shit, it just means that it's meant for other, better, greater things. Okay. When I got... When I got in the accident, I did suffer a brain injury, and that does affect my cognitive abilities, and it did give me extreme PTSD and all this other stuff. And I don't like to talk about those types of things, but I'm I'm over here struggling, trying to do my thing, and these people are just trying to make, uh, they're just I get it, make the videos and stuff like that, but make it make it right once again he brings up his problems and how much of a hard time he's having now because i'm making a video on him sympathy again this video in particular sent all his fans to call me a horrible person how dare you make a video on a person who is dealing with mental health problems right now what he does it's it's so manipulative and gross just as this tweet for example he says that he owns it right but <laughs> in this response is it in poor taste look yes Yes, this, this joke is in poor taste. It should not have been made. But he is obviously missing the point. He's nitpicking which part he wants to respond to. And the, that is the part that makes him look like a victim. In this initial point, they want to refer to the criticism. And they are calling him out on deflecting because he's using this victim narrative. And what the fuck does he do? He taps out. He doubles down. Absolutely just picks out the part that makes him look like the victim. So, was this joke in poor taste? Yes. Was he focusing on the wrong part? Also, yes. I think the reason why this specific point pisses me off so much is because he, his use of sympathy and victimhood is almost like it's a weapon, ironically, which, which makes him kind of like a predator, you know? And you know what? I actually do have a better metaphor for you. Oof. That all ended because she felt sorry for you. You act like prey, but you're a predator. You use pity to lure in your victims. It's how you survive. I survive because I know everything. That snake survives because children wander off. And you survive because people think, oh, this poor piece of shit, he never gets a break. I can't stand the deafening silent wails of his wilting soul. I guess I'll hire him or marry him. <laughs> So if we consider all of the points that we just listed, you know, all of the typical Rebzilla-isms that he employs in order to avoid any kind of criticism and accountability and actual personal growth, we can apply those to one of his most recent and weirdest choices in videos, and that is his accountability, I guess, or explanation. Yeah, let's go with explanation of what had happened with the Keemstar situation. Now, just a brief contextualization, he made a thumbnail that was memed on and this thumbnail as you can see here is that the idea of kings are dating a 20 year old child yeah the joke being that it's a child and 20 years old these things are not factually coherent with each other the reason why i chose this is because i care not at all about the topic at hand i literally just chose this 
argument to analyze so that we can see how his logic follows exactly all of the criticisms that he did in 2019 prior on Twitter, things that he's been criticized forever and he said that he's working on. He's literally still doing that even in a situation as petty as this where it literally doesn't matter, where he could have just taken the L and kept it pushing. He decided, nope, I'm gonna rip Zella this. Let's analyze this bitch. I made a video. It was about Keemstar's new relationship with a girl that was 20 years old. Now, I titled this video, Keemstar is dating a 20 year old child, which I guess I should have put in quotations. People were automatically disliking the video without watching the content, reading the description of the video, or any indicating other factors just other than the title. Okay, the first thing that he does is he decides to go for the victim narrative. We've established this is routine. So his evidence is that he has like an 8% dislike on his video. So that, that's his evidence of being hated and hate bombed and ratioed. But he's literally A, received worse ratios on some of his other videos. <laughs> and 8% um, is like, literally, what is that even? For somebody who claims that they think for themselves and goes against the grain, an 8% dislike should not count as a dislike bombing of, of any sort. This is ridiculous. This is quite the stretch to paint yourself as being hated and a victim and standing up against people and being unfairly targeted. But okay. And I wouldn't normally make a video on this, but Keemstar made a tweet directing thousands of people in my direction without giving any context or even watching the video himself. Oh, Ribzilla, my dude, my guy, what context? What are you even talking about? The comment made originally was about your thumbnail, which you agreed to because you changed your thumbnail accordingly, like literally within 30 minutes. In other words, you absolutely acknowledged what the problem was Context is not necessary and also your description if we look here does not clarify what you are about to say You are asking probing questions. You're literally clickbaiting your description on Twitter I mean this does not tell me which what way you're going to go in this video and nobody owes you a watch and a read After literally the problem was the thumbnail Regardless of that his intent what happened was is I got a massive amount of hate Hello, darkness, my old uh, people trying to school me and let me know that somebody that is 20 years old is in fact not a child when that's the whole point of my video. I responded saying that was meant to be in quotations as the video makes clear my stance. I disagreed with people going after you calling her a 20 year old child. It takes away from serious situations where children are getting hurt. Just watch the video. Here we see another earlier problem addressed that he's trying to turn criticism into another moral grandstanding where he can't just state that he's right and that he was right and that he did nothing wrong but he also has to just casually drop that he's better than everybody else and you know he cares about the children. When I first posted that video I was taken aback because I thought people would know I put child in all caps and I don't normally put things in caps like that. I mean, I do sometimes, but it's usually to prove a point. And I guess my mistake was that I didn't put it in quotations. And I, I this is possibly the most brain dead take. Um, I'm not wrong, guys. You just don't understand the joke. Okay, so as much as he's willing to acknowledge any of the criticism, he decided that he should lean into it even more. In other words, you know, doubling down. In which case, if he truly believes he did nothing wrong, which I'm personally actually inclined to believe, he still decided to change the thumbnail. So that is an admittance of guilt. Mm, such a revolutionary king, so brave, much wow. Say it multiple times, that's what the video is about. It's about me taking issue with people saying that this is a 20 year old child when there's no evidence of any wrongdoing. There's no exploitation of power or that we have evidence of. There's it was completely a consensual relationship and this could take away from more serious issues. That's my stance. But these people were not watching the video. They were going off the title. Okay, finally, finally at this point of the video, he finally makes his case. This is the only thing he needed to say. And you know what? This could have been a tweet. But no, we have to create a narrative of pity and victimization and contextualization in order to make this point as if this in any way makes this point more valid. You literally could have just said this. It gets really complex. 
despite me breaking it down scientifically, p pulling up educational articles, dot org articles, scholarly articles, and different things like that, and this, all throughout the video, all you had to do was just watch it. His tweet directed towards me has over 7,000 likes, 84 retweets. The comments and the quote tweets are full of people trying to school me on points that I already made in my video. Uh, yeah, he just had to remind us that he's better than us again. 11, 12, 13 kid children uh, from people that would take advantage of them online and really leverage their platform, like Mini Lad. Like, uh, and it's not even like I tried to clickbait the title. I was very consistent with my message within the first minute. I stated what it was, and in the description, in my uh, a tweet, anywhere this was, it was pretty self evident. So I was just completely shocked. <laughs> Lol, this is such a lie. You do clickbait. And the thing is, I, me personally, I do not care about clickbaiting. That is his subscriber's problem. If they recognize the pattern and choose to unsubscribe, then that's, you know, on them. But I mean, to literally list predators and to say that, you know, oh, I should not get criticism. We should spend our energy hating these people. They're the real villains. Are you serious? Are you saying, are you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, rips a lot, rips a lot. No, I, I can't even. He's literally saying that we should care about Mini Lad and not care about him at all. Thing, I, w I was just gonna change my title and move on with it, but then somebody screen and I, it's important to note that I changed that uh, title within the first thirty minutes of the video. Somebody screen capped that and thought they they were gonna have a one up on me. How do you not read the description? and watch the video, or pick up on any type of sarcasm towards that. And it is a very serious thing. Like, in this specific situation, I'll, I tend to be impartial and more with the facts on it. Here we see a classical case of uh, irrelevant fluff that's brought into the argument for no apparent reason. So, okay, he cares about the quote-unquote facts of the matter, but that's literally the opposite of sarcasm. So he's just tackling the situation from both sides, right? So he thought, based on what he had actually done, he immediately changed the title and thumbnail, which was the warranted criticism, right? But then he went on to say that he's so upset that people didn't watch the video, read the tweet, and read the description. Those were not the problem. Nobody cared about that. And the thing is, again, also, Ripsala, it's a joke. Come on. Like, it's it doesn't, it's not that serious. Again, like with the clickbaiting thing as well, I mean, this could have literally been a tweet, but he, he did this for the views. This is literally what he did. I mean, he's beyond the point of that none of this is for the views or the clickbait. Like, he knows what he's doing and oh, so manipulative. That I already made him a video. It's important to note that I got the idea for the title of my video from another creator. Bo Blacks, Keemstar is dating a 20 year old and in the, the uh, thumbnail it says 20 year old child. And this is literally just blame shifting with absolutely zero ability to take any sort of accountability and consequences of his own choices and actions. Then uh, somebody who's covered intense situations, I don't see any reason to go after Keemstar. Like, like I said, I get it. He is a very unlikable dude. He said some things to me that I didn't like either, but that doesn't mean I'm going to like use this as an opportunity. Like I feel like my integrity uh, means more to me than uh, trying to get some views on a situation like this. <laughs> Ripsala, this video is literally going after Keemstar though. I mean, it's literally for the views since like your main point is one sentence that could have been a tweet. The rest is just fluff and variations of, oh, poor me, other people are worse and he did it too. Also, like he caved and changed the title and thumbnail. So he's fucking lying. What this really is about is there's a group of people out there, Keemstar included, who uh, have a thing against T channels. And they like to say that I'm a T channel. And I'm not a T channel. Though on some occasions I've been known to spill the tea. My drink's a little bit stronger than that. It's called being objective and impartial and staying more with the facts. That's important before we go forward and start breaking down this report to understand that this report is made objectively from an officer placing out the facts as they are. It's very impartial. So a lot of you guys who have uh, become very emotionally invested in this, as have I, you're going to read this stuff because us as a community, we know a lot more of the details in this situation that the officers really don't know. This is We know a lot more of the details in this situation that the officers really don't know. This 
So what I'm trying to say here is this is a case in point classic Gribzilla move. He doesn't pick a side. He picks every single side. You don't know where he stands so that he cannot get criticism because he can always say, yeah, but I said that. Yeah, but I'm on this team. No, I'm on your side. He's on everybody's side, which means he's on nobody's side. And you know what? He's really only on Ribzilla's side. Because here, what he's saying is that, yeah, he's right. Because the only reason that he's getting hate at all is because he is a T-channel. But he's also not a T-channel since he's so objective and truthful and he likes something stronger than T. However, when there was a case when objective facts were the only thing that mattered, such in the police officer's report on Onision, he did not care about being objective. Why? Because he knows more. He's more informed than the objectivity of the police officers. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you have too many fucking positivity turtles in your comment section. So in conclusion, it's pretty clear that Ribzilla is manipulative, he plays the victim role, he has an inability to take accountability, he plays all sides, and he's constantly working on himself. Right? Am I right? Okay. So, yeah. I don't think that means that we should necessarily cancel him, I just think that he kinda sucks. And you know what, I was going to start off this video by making the case that he lacks capacity, in other words, he's like too dumb to take accountability and learn and grow um but <laughs> based on all the evidence that i've seen while doing my research and the reoccurring theme and how he seems to behind the scenes understand these concepts that he's using i straight up now am convinced that he doesn't lack the capacity he's just simply manipulative and he knows what will make him look the best in the public eye and he will just continue doing that and playing the victim while doing that. Now, I'm not saying that we should cancel Ribzilla. I'm not saying we should deplatform Ribzilla. I'm saying that he has all these specific qualities and instead of encouraging him to continue this narrative of helping victims, well, you know, in essence, creating more victims than he's actually helping, I think his skills could be better used. So where in the world do you personally think somebody who's manipulative, cunning, and likes to play all different sides while saying, I'm sorry and I'm learning and I'm growing while doing absolutely none of that? Where do people like this thrive? Yes, you're right. Now look, I'm ever the pessimist and I just do not think that he can or wants to change. And you know what? It's fine. We don't need to deplatform the dude. We don't need to cancel him. How and where in the world can this actually have a, a net neutral overall effect instead of a net negative effect as we do see? I propose that he follows his heart based on this tweet. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Ribzilla wants to do politics. And this is probably the best idea that he's ever had. Hashtag political turtles. Hashtag rape squad left squad. I don't know. I mean, leave your hashtag suggestions in the comments below. I this this is just endless. This is the best idea ever. He should enter politics. He should steer away from all the sex and the rape and the children because he just does not know what he's doing and he just doesn't have the capabilities to take any accountability for fucking this up as severely as he continuously does. So go into politics, lie, manipulate, cheat, deflect. These are skills that are actually pretty fucking good for this situation. Mr. West, do you have any words for our viewers? The internet usually does, and this is something that you don't want, you don't want this out here on these types of websites. So ultimately then, I think the reason why Ribzilla won't change is because not only is he truly this person, but he also wants to be this person and he's garnered success through being this type of person. So therefore, why would he want to change? But in the end of the day, I'm just a thought with an opinion and I don't know shit about fuck. Peace.